Welcome to Electron Line. Well, it turns out that Gauss also came up with an equation that very easily allowed them to calculate the force experienced by an object near a gravitational source, typically a mass. So let's say we have an infinite sheet and we want to know what the gravitational field strength is at some point away from that, from that sheet. And that has a lot in common with what we know with electrostatics. Gauss's law for electrostatics says that the surface integral of the electric field strength times the area of that surface is equal to the Q, the charge inside that surface, divided by epsilon sub naught, which is the permeability, or I should say the permittivity of free space. Not the permeability, but the permittivity of free space. And here, what we have is a similar equation. This is Gauss's law for gravitation. So we have the surface integral of the gravitational field. So instead of the electric field, we have the gravi gravitational field dotted. This is the dot product with the dA, which is the surface area of that Gauss's region. And that is equal to minus 4 pi times the gravitational constant times the mass contained within that. So let's go ahead and put it as mass inside that Gaussian surface. So if I have an infinite sheet here, Notice that if we cut a Gaussian surface through it, which is the shape of a cylinder, we can see that the gravitational field will be directed outward. I'm looking for my red pen here, which is hiding. So you can see that there will be an electric field, uh, not an electric field, but a gravitational field pointed towards the sheet from the back and from the front. And so we have a gravitational field on one side, and we have a gravitational field on the other side. And if we're a certain distance away from there, we want to know what the strength of that field is. So notice that there's no field lines going to the side of that Gaussian surface, only through the very edges. So we only need to worry about the surface area of the very edges of that cylindrical Gaussian shape. So notice that we call the mass per unit area of the sheet equal to sigma. Sigma is therefore the mass divided by the area, or the mass of any cutout area is equal to the mass density times the area of that cutout. So now we're going to try to calculate this. So what we're going to do is realize that when we dot, do the dot product here, that these are perpendicular to each other. So you can see that we have the field going in one direction, and we also have the area vector in this. So we have the field going in and the area vector going out, which means that they differ by 180 degrees. That's where the negative sign comes from. But since it's 180 degrees, we can simply write this as the strength of the gravitational field, G, multiplied times the area through which the field goes through. That would be the sum of these two areas, so that would be times 2A. And of course, the result of a dot product is going to be a scalar quantity right here. So this will be a scalar quantity, and that is equal to minus 4 pi G m inside. Now the mass inside can be found by simply multiplying the density times the area of the cutout. So we have g times 2a is equal to minus 4 pi times g and the mass inside will be the density times the area. Now we only have to call the area once because it's that area cut out of the sheet. We have an a now on both sides so this a cancels out this a and divide both sides by 2, so this goes to 1 and this goes to 2. So now we have the strength of the gravitational field, the magnitude of that field, is equal to minus 2 pi g sigma, sigma being the mass density, and this is equal to the strength of the gravitational field. Now, if we want to know how much force an object experiences, at that distance, and now notice it actually doesn't even matter what distance we have because g here is not dependent on the distance because we do have an infinite sheet of, of uh, mass. And so we can then say that the force, since we have F equals ma, and of course in this case m is g, uh, a is g, we can then say to calculate the force we simply have to multiply g times m, so the force experienced is equal to m times g, in other words, if we place a small mass at a distance away from that infinite sheet, and it doesn't matter how big, how big that distance is, this will be equal to minus 2 pi g sigma m, and that will be the force experienced by a small mass placed 
not by an infinite sheet. Now the reason why we did this example is to show you that just like with electrostatics we can calculate the strength of the electric field and with gravitational uh, forces we can calculate the gravitational field strength or the force on a small mass using Gauss's law as well and that's how it's done.